Okay, now I think I should be on. Let me know if it's working now. I think it is. Okay. There we go. Now, I think oh my goodness. I always forget to push the button, so it automatically puts my microphone on this other object that I have set up here instead of what I have using. It's so annoying, and I forgot to do it because I haven't been live in a couple of weeks. So how have you all been? Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for hanging out while I got those glitches going. That's why I always have to double check that my sound is working. Otherwise, it's just, it's, Sometimes I go live and then it doesn't work and I keep talking and it's pointless. <laughs> All right. So if you can hear me now, leave me a comment below. Tell me who you are, where you're watching from, where you are in your Christmas making projects. Are you making projects for Christmas gifts? Are you almost done with them? Or are you feeling behind? Um, I know I feel behind all the time. Um, I've got tons of projects going and um, work projects and personal projects and all the kinds of things. But usually at the last second, they all come together or I learn how to pace myself better instead of stress myself out, right? So I hope that quilting can help calm you down and give you some uh, relaxation during this crazy season. Um, that should be fun and joyful, right? So yeah, Kay says she's behind. I getcha. So take some time, breathe, make sure you're taking care of yourself too. This is things I'm learning myself. I am such a go-getter. I like to just do, 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 do. And I've got a, a project list a mile long and I think that I can get it all done. I think that I have enough time and I never do. And so I'm learning to pace myself a little better, give myself that grace that I need that it's okay. You know, those expectations we have on ourselves are so much higher than people have on us um, in real life. So take some deep breaths, go for a walk, uh, you know, take some time to sew something that you want to sew, something that you're having fun with instead of those things that you have to get done, right? So I am working today on two different things. I've got my embroidery machine set up so I can um, put my little nephew's name on his stocking. So we'll get that started here. And then I have a project over on this side that we're going to be cutting out for um, one of my custom orders. So let's get to it. Let me get everything switched around here and feel free to leave comments in the box. I love that. When you comment, like, share, all those things, it helps the algorithms of both Facebook and YouTube tell the audiences that um, you want to hear more from us for one and two um, it will boost it to more people that are just like you who might want to see our videos as well so um, anyway I'm Rachel I'm the the owner of journey back quilts and creator of all these crazy things that we're doing in here if you haven't met me before welcome I'm so glad that you're joining me all right now let's get to the fun stuff all right let's switch the camera Okay, so that's the one we're going to cut out in a minute. Lovely, lovely, fun jeans. I really dislike sewing with jeans most of the time, but I have found a way that I'm making these work and it's going really well. So we're going to make a quilt out of these jeans as a memory quilt. And then let's switch it over here. Here's the embroidery machine. So I've got his little stocking all... Um, set up. I had to take a seam out here and then it had a lovely silk liner in it that I had to take off and I've got it all marked but I'm going to double check that it is lined up where I want it to go. That's kind of a handy little feature so I can see where it's going to hit on the stocking and make sure it's centered where I want it to go. All right, so I'm going to hold my thread tail and we're going to put the foot down and then tell it to go. And here we go. Embroidery is not my most favorite thing to do in the world, um, probably because I just don't have enough practice in it. But let me move the camera here for you so you can see it a little better maybe rotate some stuff sorry hang in there with me while I try to unscrew the tripod so you can see it there we go that's better I 
I would much rather make applique work with the Cricut to cut out um, pieces of fabric and then sew that on there. But things like stockings like this, you kind of have to embroider it. It's too small to do an applique. Plus her other stockings are already appliqued, so, or I mean embroidered. So we want it to match. Pretty fun. As long as the thread doesn't shred and break, <laughs> then it's pretty fun. So I'm using glide thread, which is what I use in the long arm as well. It's a polyester thread. So it's got that nice shine to it. Um, when it's in, it uses an embroidery thread, then it's really shiny and pretty like that. But um, on the long arm, you don't really see that shine and pop, but it's a stronger thread. So it's gonna help the quilt last longer and it quilts so much nicer with less thread breakage and all those kinds of things that a cotton thread would do. So I really like this thread. We're starting to um, get it in our shop, but um, we haven't had a huge demand for it quite yet. So if you are interested in this thread, just let us know what thread you're interested in and what color and we can get it in stock for you. So now it's going down, finishing that M. So cute. <laughs> Hi, Kendra. Thanks for joining me. I think we may just sit here and finish watching this just to make sure we don't have any oopsies. It won't take us very much longer. I think another five minutes or so and it should be done. So I'm using a stabilizer and I forget the name of it, but it's sticky. So I just was able to stick the stocking right on top of it instead of having to put it in the hoop. And then I have another stabilizer on top that's a thin film and that helps the threads be able to sit on top of the project instead of sinking inside of it. Um, that's great when you have a lot of threads going on something or you're doing something on knit. Um, or towels or something like that so that those threads pop up instead of sinking inside. And then you just tear everything away and it um, this top part will wash out and stuff. So makes it really nice, really easy. So far, so good. I do use... Um, uh, an embroidery needle that's the 7511. So it's very thin compared to the, the 9014 needle that I use for piecing. So everything kind of has to be changed when you do embroidery from quilting. Even the bobbin case is different. Um, and I'd have to look at them to tell you the difference. But this is for quilting and other sewing projects, but there's a different one. Um, for embroidery, so. Gets kind of technical. Let me know what you guys are working on for Christmas projects. Do you have fun, some fun stuff going on? Leave a comment and let me know. You can always go share pictures of them as well on our free Facebook page. Um, it's called Your Quilting Journey Show and Tell page. It's a free page. You can post anything, anytime, things that you're working on. Um, we love seeing your quilting projects, but if you have some embroidery projects or anything else that you're working on. We love all these kinds of crafts. So show us what you're working on.
this is where it kind of gets nervous for me because there's not a seam right here that I could take out. So hopefully it won't get stuck or hung up on that fold. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining us. Just getting some stitching done on my nephew's stocking. This is his first Christmas, so it's going to be so fun. He is such a doll baby. I got to babysit him yesterday, and it was like, oh, I love the baby. All the baby snuggles and cuteness and their smell. But then it's kind of nice that they can go home and cry at home. <laughs> All right, just one more minute and then it will be done. And then we'll start cutting up those jeans to make that memory quilt. Yeah, Mary, you know what I mean. <laughs> she says I have five grams. Yeah, it's fun to love on them and snuggle them and then send them home with mommy when they are crying or not happy. <laughs> My kiddos are teenagers now, so early teenagers. And so they still get snuggly once in a while, but they're not snuggly like that baby snuggle is. Yay, looks good. Ta-da! And then it has to sing at you. All done. So now I'll take it off the hoop and then I'll have to um, see if I can weasel it underneath that foot. It's so thick. And then I'll have to piece it back together and Put those seams back in place. Hopefully halfway decent. And all of this tape, uh, I cannot remember the name of it, but it's some kind of sewing tape that's used for embroidery projects. So you can tape back your project when it is weird like this. Let me move to a different camera so you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. So all this fun tape. It's very strong. It's kind of like masking tape feel, but it's a lot stronger, very sticky, and it's somewhat reusable because it is so strong, depending on what project it is that you're doing. Okay, and then this film just comes right off. So like I said, I don't love doing embroidery stuff all the time. I have to set up my machine because I use this same sewing machine for piecing as well. Um, but I have a friend who has a um, an embroidery business. So if you need anything, I'll probably pass her name along to you. <laughs> I just do this for fun or for friends and family occasionally for a custom order. But I would much rather do, um, like I said, the applique work for names and things on a quilt. And I can show you an example of that too, because I just finished one yesterday. So I'm gonna take this off the hoop. And so it's just stuck to this paper that's all sticky. So I'm gonna try to gently take that off. The silk lining wanted to stick to it, of course. Ooh. It made a little bit of a rat nest in the back. Glad it didn't show that on the front. Oh, 
lovely silk threads. Okay, there we go. So I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it really made some rat nests back there, which isn't cool, but at least it didn't mess up the front. So sometimes I'll go through and pick all this out as much as I can, but it really doesn't matter, especially with this kind of a project. If it was on a shirt, it would probably matter because it would itch and stuff, but I'm just going to sew that lining back over it and then sew it back up on the side and then it'll be all done. So just need to clip all those connecting threads. Try not to clip the stocking in the process. Oh, Macy has to say hi. Okay, and then there's just a little bit of that stabilizer stuck in between some of the lettering. So we'll just pull that out. There we go. Isn't that cute? It's got some cute little pom-poms there to hang it up with. And yeah, turned out good. So I'll probably have to hand sew some of this shut, but that'll be a good couch project for tonight. All right. So now I am working on this memory quilt for a client. And it's kind of a, a sad story. Um, her daughter passed away as a senior in high school. So we're making memory quilts for every one in her family to remember her by. And this girl had a lot of clothes, a lot of cute clothes. So it's been fun to make all these memory quilts with them. And let me grab that quilt so you can see the the applique of it. So I got this off the long arm yesterday and put her, her name up here with the applique. So it's really cool. I love this stuff. I've shown this stuff before in a live, but let me show you again. So it's called Heat and Bond Light. It's a double-sided, sticky, fusible stabilizer type stuff. So it comes on paper, but then one side has the sticky, and then you peel the paper off once you've ironed on this one side, and then you can peel the paper off and put your fabric um, iron your fabric on. So you can cut out your applique designs. I use my Cricut to cut all these out so we can use different fonts for all the quilts and makes it really easy and really fun. And then I just stitch around the outside. So this is a raw edge applique. You could do a satin stitch around it as well. So it makes it really easy, really fun. We have that product in our shop. So you can go to journeybackquilts.com and shop on there if you need some. But yeah, did this quilt turn out cute? So I set the machine, the long arm, to go around all of the pockets instead of stitching on top of them. And as well as all these buttons. So all these fun button down shirts had some really cute buttons, some really fun, beautiful ones. So I just told the machine, don't sew over those. And it avoided them pretty well. We had a little hiccup towards the end, which is always what happens, but just with the machine, not the quilt. So everything looks really good now. So we're going to make its twin almost the exact same, but instead of using the pockets, we're just going to use some of this dark denim. And this is going to be the borders or the sashing. 
and all of these button downs will be the blocks. So we've got some of the backs of the shirts and I just love this shirt, it's so pretty. So we need to lay this out on the design wall and figure out how I'm gonna do it. So let's cut these apart here first and then we'll lay it out. So this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video. So if you need to go, you can come back and watch the replay later. If you're watching the replay, just um, comment hashtag replay. I would love to know who you are and where you're watching from. Okay, so we need, let's see how many of these, I think 16, yep, 16 cornerstones. So I'm just going to cut the pant leg off. And yeah, the first time that I made a memory quilt, it was very nerve wracking cutting things apart and taking it totally apart to piece it back together into a quilt, but it turned out so good. It gave me the confidence to keep going. So if you've ever felt nervous about making a memory quilt, just try it. You could even get some um, pieces of clothing from the thrift store, something like that to practice on first if you feel too nervous. But these quilts are a very um, popular thing right now, which I love because we're recycling the clothing and we're creating a memory. So you can wrap yourself in this fun memory. Okay, now I have too much stuff on my ironing board. Let me clear that off. So I'm gonna give these pant legs a quick press so we can get all those seams laying the right way. Okay, that'll be a little bit easier to handle. And I'm just gonna cut these into six inch blocks, but first I'm gonna cut it into a six inch strip and then I'll sub cut those down. So I get at least two strips of six inches out of this leg. Line it back up. Okay. And then let's clean up this. Well, we have a clean end on this side, so I'm just gonna flip it over. Line up that raw edge with the edge of my ruler, because this is a six inch ruler, but I am double checking that we are perpendicular with that edge so that we get a nice square and not um, a rhombus. That would be sad.
With jeans, I don't use um, an interfacing or a stabilizer. I just use the jeans. They're thick enough and they work pretty well with the t-shirts or whatever material we're putting on there. Um, and see, this one is not perpendicular anymore. So I'm gonna trim that little tiny bit off. So there's three. Four. Five. Cool. All right, let's try this one. I try to avoid this seam here that's really been doubled over. There's a lot of denim right there. But this seam right here, it just has maybe one or two layers put together. So it's not as dense. And my machine will usually go through that one okay. But if I had my way, I would just use this fabric and not the seams. But we need a six inch block. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of that seam. Make sure I'm not slipping here. And it does wear your blade out, so you'll have to get a new blade probably after using, using it on a lot of denim. Oop, and see, sometimes the seam right here will just come right off, and that's really helpful. So I may just go in on the back and see if I can cut some of it off. That'll lessen the load a little bit. All right, so now let's flip it over. Cut those six inch blocks. That one's just a touch too short. Bummer. Okay, so we need to cut one more. I think we're going to get all 16 cornerstones out of this one pair of jeans. So that's really helpful.
I think I'm at 14. So let me double check. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. We need two more. Try to see if I can get just two more from this top piece here. Pretty close. Okay. Guess I needed to slide the ruler down just a tiny bit. Or cut just a little further. That's okay. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can cut that off. I just do not like sewing over that bulk. Uh, I've had too many needles break and it's scary over my long arm and I just don't want to have it break. So if I can clean up as much of it as possible, then that's really helpful. Okay, I think I have all my pieces now. So we've got the cornerstones and the blocks and the sashing. So I've got two different sizes of sashing to go around this. So let me change the camera view so we can lay it out on the design wall now. Okay, there we go. Rotate you over here a little bit. All right. So my design wall is made out of foam. It's um, like a construction type foam. I can't remember the name of it. You'd have to ask my husband. But we covered it with some flannel and it makes normal quilt blocks just be able to stick to it. So I can just do my design on the wall and just stick it to it. Um, but with these kind of pieces, they are a lot heavier. So they don't just stick to the flannel. But the cool thing is, since it's made out of foam, I can just use my pins and stick my pin in the block to hold it in there. So that makes it really handy. All right. So I haven't really thought through how I want to put these. So we might have to rearrange them a little bit. But let me just get them organized real quick. Because I have a front and a back to each of the shirts. So I think I want to spread those out a little bit. And I need your opinion. So if you can leave me a comment in the box as we get going, how this layout is going, um, I have two different ideas. Either the blocks will be like this, where you put one there and the next one here of the same one. So it kind of goes, you know, down diagonally. Or should we put them opposite of each other? So the same color block is on the top and then skip a row and put it on the bottom. So as I get laying out, let's play with that and give me your opinion on what you think would look best. So I only have one of this shirt, so that is gonna be the middle. So I'm going to put that right here in the center. Let's see if that's a good spot for you to see. Okay. And then we're gonna put some sashing around it. So that is a term that a lot of quilters get mixed up. I used to call them borders as well, but borders are actually the very outside 
border that would go around your quilt, the middle borders <laughs> that go in between your blocks are called sashing. Okay, so far so good. And let's put some on the top and bottom. And then put some cornerstones in between all that. So this fabric is just going to really pop. It's going to look so cool. Okay, so we're doing nine different blocks. So we're going to put two on either side of that. So should we put the blue blocks on either side here? Or should they go diagonally? Let's try it this way first and see how it looks. Once I have the design all up on the wall, then I like to take a picture of it with my cell phone and change the picture to a black and white picture. That way I can see where the dimensions of the colors are popping through. So a lot of times when you just lay your quilt out, you might have a lot of darker colored saturation, kind of whatever the terms are, the saturation of the colors all up in one corner or something like that. And so you can see where you need to spread those colors out a little better when you change it to a black and white picture. Um, and then you also get just the overall picture of what the quilt will look like because it's all condensed down into your, your photo. So let's put another cornerstone or sashing up. So far, all these shirts are pretty much the same saturation. They're pretty light. But that's where these cornerstones really pop. So far, so good. Cool. I like it. Okay. Um, now we're on to the next row. So I think I'm going to put... I'm going to try to put the pinks a little bit more opposite of each other. So I'm going to put this pink one down here. And this pink one up here. And I'm short, so I've got to get my step stool. There we go. Okay. And then... Let's put um, I'm not sure which one to put next. I really, really like this one. So I think I'm going to put that one up on the top. Okay. 
And then I think I'm going to put all of the button down ones in the same row because then it'll be like all of these are the button down fronts and then all of these are the button down backs. I don't know. Let's see how that looks. All right, tell me what you think. The nice thing about doing a layout is that it's removable. You can move it around if you don't like it. And having a wall like this is so handy so my back's not killing me as badly. Crawling around on the floor is for the birds or the children. <laughs> Yeah, it's looking good. Let's change your camera view just a touch. There we go. Yeah, I think I like that. I'm not sure. Tell me what you think. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too, Mary. Mary says on the top row, I'd place the floral in the middle to balance the plaids. So yeah, good idea. So let's switch these and see what that looks like. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better too. It kind of makes that that X with the light and then puts the darks in the corners. Yeah, cool. Now I'm wondering if I should switch some things around because I have all the backs of the shirts. So I've got two V's going on right here. If I should switch these two so that it's not front, front, back, back, back.
Yeah, I think I like that better. It's, it's going to be awkward either way. It, I love symmetry and keeping everything very symmetrical. Um, and so this bothers me. <laughs> We've got a button down and a button down and a button down. I would rather it be like button down, not button down, not, you know, but it's going to be what it's going to be. So yeah, looks good. Okay. So then I just have the last um, cornerstones and sashing to put on there. And then I'll cut out her name and get it on the long arm, get it all sewn up and put on the long arm. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today and getting this all design done and Micaiah's little stocking all made with me. So I hope that you guys are doing well, that you're getting your Christmas projects ready. I would love to see them. So go join our free Facebook group at Your Quilting Journey Show and Tell page. And I'd love to see that. So um, let me double check all the comments here. Thanks, Kendra. Yeah, it's all, it's so amazing how they come together, huh? Can't see the buttons on the camera. I'm not sure what you mean there. Oh, you can't see the buttons from the camera. Yeah, there you go. So five foot rule, right? <laughs> I will definitely let you see the finished quilt. Um, make sure that you're following our Facebook page and um, or our Instagram page. We're there at Journey Back Quilts. And uh, I'll be posting pictures of all these finished quilts as we get them done. There's 12, I think 11 to 12 quilts in this order plus a pillow. So there's a lot going on here. I think we've posted three, two or three of them a couple weeks ago. So you can go check those out and um, you'll notice them because they all have the same name on the quilt. And yeah, so thank you so much for joining me today. Next week, I have no idea what we're doing yet. Um, I'm kind of changing up what we used to do with um, all of our lives is we'd have a different topic every single week, but I think I'm going to be changing some of those things up. So make sure that you um, are subscribed to our newsletter. I think there's a link in the description box for that. Plus you get a free pattern when you do that. So that was one of my very first patterns I've written and gotten all cleaned up and pretty. So I would love to see um, you create that and um, test it out. So yeah, um, Mary, I hope you enjoy your day too. Thanks for hanging out with me today and make sure you share this with your friends and family so that they can follow along with us. And we've got some fun things coming up in the new year. So make sure you stay tuned. All right. Well, you guys have a blessed day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.